Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my quick video demonstration of my texture baking script. This is available on Creative Crash, and this is a video demonstration. Alright, here we go. So in the background, I have a uh, collection of objects. They all have different shaders assigned to them, different types of shaders, and each of those shaders have a different node network. If we zoom in a little bit closer, uh, we see this guy's a blend, there's a 3D bump, we have a granite, uh, 2D and 3D textures. Here we have a 2D texture into a Lambert, uh, an MIA passes material with a similar configuration. And then we have a surface shader as well uh, with a file texture, which has been modified and it piped into out color. So this is just basically uh, a quick demonstration scene. The way this script works is you have X and Y res, for your final bake texture resolution. Anti-alias is a checkbox for more additional quality at the cost of uh, larger convert times. So if you're doing this overnight, you might as well check it. It'll just look a little bit better. Uh, output directory. Uh, this will default to, uh, not this directory actually, this defaults to uh, the source images directory of your current project. So if you even use projects, or if you don't, it's going to try to find that project. So chances are you're going to want to change this to a custom directory. Uh, this checkbox here, uh, the second one, resource textures to new directory. Basically, after the script finishes, it copies all the file textures to this directory, which currently is set to C test textures, and uh, then it edits all the file nodes, and it updates the pathing as well to uh, that the directory. So if you browse, you have your uh, default file browsers. You can just, you know, go to your folder, hit select directory, and here you are. This checkbox uh, basically takes all of the objects that say this shader is assigned to, which in this case is just this torus. But upon completion, the script will assign all of these objects to the new baked material. Uh, this is unchecked by default. Okay, so when you add your set of uh, uh, shader and, and an object, you want to select your mesh first and your shader. The script will do its best to correct any errors along the way and it will not add the selection if you have anything other than two objects selected. This is very important. So we're going to go and select these two objects and add the set. As you see here, we get this funky looking line of text, P Taurus, Blend 1, 512, 512, and 0. And they're separated by these little funky collection of characters. This is simply a line of code that the text, uh, I'm sorry, that the um, script understands. The important part is, is that the geometry comes first and the shader comes next. Other than that, uh, you should be set. So if you select and continue adding, notice if I, if I deselect the shader first and then the mesh and click add, it will correct it and put the uh, object first, then the shader. So it's fairly forgiving in that manner. Now that we have all our objects um, basically on our list, we are free to click Start. Before I do that, though, I want to illustrate that these don't all have to have the same settings. I put them all in at 512, but if I wanted to have the bottom surface shader plane be uh, 2048, for example, that is quite easy to do. I just have those two selected Add, and as you see, it's um, set to bake at 2048. I can also anti-alias whichever ones. The point of this is so that you can set up a numerous collection of textures and batch bake them overnight or whenever. Uh, of course, baking, as you probably know, takes a complicated node network such as these or bigger, uh, and it simplifies it down to, you know, just textures into a, a channel slot, and that renders a lot quicker. This is a pretty uh, annoying process to do manually, as there are no tools in Maya to quickly convert all the textures in a scene at once. Uh, but except this is here to solve that problem. So if you click start, and we wait, uh, it goes through the process of converting each texture, and that slew of windows you saw pop up was um, this checkbox here in action. Basically, it uses a Windows command called RoboCopy to copy everything from the directory within to the directory specified here. Uh, that means that this script at this time does not work on Mac or Linux. However, if it needs to work on that, and if there's enough demand, I will most definitely uh, develop that feature for future releases. Alright, so if I pull up Windows Explorer, 
pull up the textures folder, as you see, we have our textures. Um, if we go through them, they look pretty bad, but they work correctly. Uh, and also, you know, as the hypershade normally does, it scrambles things up a bit, but our resulting textures are over here. So if we uh, kind of reorder these, and let's go ahead and graph, whoops, just our new bank textures. As you can see, we have all of them. And as you see here, uh, they are sourced to C, test, textures, and then the texture name. All of them should be sourced to that location. I'm pleased to tell you they are. Also, this script does take the liberty of checking. Alpha is luminance for the uh, textures that need it, such as bump maps, reflection channels, so on and so forth. Uh, also, our 2D bump nodes are not tuned to match the 3D bump nodes. The thing is about 3D bumps, uh, they're scale specific, so there's really no way to calibrate it to match that exactly. You're going to have to tweak any, uh, any bump nodes to match your previous settings uh, manually. All right. Uh, that completes this tutorial and video demonstration, and uh, I hope you enjoy the script, and please let me know if there's any bugs or issues you need to work out, and I will get them fixed for future releases. Thank you very much. Goodbye.